right, good morning, everybody. So I promised that I would make a video talking about the $20,000 worth of stock that I sold in order to buy another stock that it was a high conviction stock in the portfolio. If you guys haven't seen that video already, feel free to check it out. It's one of my favorite stocks. I think it's gonna be a $250 billion company at least. Currently it's sitting around 40 odd billion dollars. So I'll leave it to you guys to go ahead and watch that video because I think it's a good one. Talks a little bit about the company as well because I think a lot of people don't know what the hell they do. But anyway, uh, I probably should have left those closed because obviously it's bright now I'm getting whitewashed, but it is what it is. So the company that I sold to buy uh, this $20,000 worth of stock was NUSI, N-U-S-I. So it's actually an ETF, it's a collared ETF. And what that basically means is they sell cover calls uh, at, you know, one to 2% above the current strike price monthly. And then they take some of that money, they buy protective puts. So that way, if the stock drops massively or anything of the like, you know, you're not really experiencing as much of a drop as you would if you were to be, say, not have protective calls or, or protective puts in this particular case. So that being said, uh, it was around 735 shares worth about 28 bucks a pop. And that's around 21-ish thousand dollars, 20 to 21-ish thousand dollars. And I used that money to buy that stock that I was telling you guys about. The hard thing about this was that I lost a decent amount of income associated with it. So Nusi generally gives out like 18 cents, maybe 19 cents a month. And so if you take away like 735 shares of that, I mean, it's a lot of money, right? Like it ends up being like eight, 1500 bucks or something a year. My math is wrong on that for sure. But, you know, it really starts to impact the income part of the portfolio. And so really you had to do a little bit of thoughts. It's like, well, you know, is it good to have 2000 shares of this highly prospective company that I think is going to go extremely well? Or is it better to sit and collect dividends? Well, in my opinion, the dividends are nice, right? The dividends are a little bit more consistent. Uh, the dividends are, in my opinion, always gonna kind of be there. Whereas this opportunity with the prospective stock that I'm looking at and put more money into, bought another thousand shares of, who knows how long that opportunity will be around. I think eventually the market will kind of come to realization that it's a really good company to buy and you're not gonna be able to buy it as cheap. Right, so I think it's relatively cheap-ish right now, especially like when I bought it, it was like 20, 21 bucks a share. So it allowed me to take 735 shares of a $28 position and sell it for $1,000 of a 20, $21 position. So, uh, or a thousand shares rather of a 20, $21 share position. At the first I was kind of hurt, right? I was like, man, I was like, Nusi, I love it. You know, I, at that point I had like $90,000 worth of Nusi. And I was like, man, Nusi, I love it. I love it a lot. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the opportunity, take a little bit of money out of Nusi, put it in some high conviction stocks. I'm really gonna focus a little bit more on the latter half of this year on dividends, dividends, dividends. So any money that I get uh, access to the portfolio is really gonna be from side hustles, everything like that. I do have to buy a little bit more Google like 0.6 more shares. It's like another 1500 bucks. And then after that, it's all gonna be about the dividends baby. So the hope is that I can continue to do well with it. I like Nusi a lot, but I think the, the current thought process, and I'll probably make a video on this going forward, I won't speak too much on it, is I really like XYLD, and I think I'm gonna couple that with RYLD to get more of like a VTI, like total stock market index sort of covered call ETF kind of going. And so I'm not going to say the splits or anything like that of XYLD versus RYLD, but you know, I think it's a good opportunity to kind of look at that. And it might be a little bit less yield than say a QYLD, a little bit less yield than an RYLD to go into XYLD, but I like the S&P, you know, I can't complain with it. It's got 500 companies that are generally speaking, like an actively managed mutual fund in that respect, right? Like they have certain set criteria. They don't meet those criteria, they're out. So I like it. It's a little bit less volatile than say the Russell counterpart as well as the NASDAQ 100 counterpart. And, um, you know, I like the NASDAQ 100, but the NASDAQ 100 is literally just the top 100 market capitalization weighted companies, right? So 
if it's the biggest company, who knows if it's actually profitable or anything like that. That can bring a lot of volatility if it's a pre-revenue sort of company, which we've seen obviously in the 2000s when we saw the market burst. And then we've obviously seen a little bit of that volatility going into this year as well, as things with the pandemic start to kind of ebb and flow. And you start seeing some of these big names that have run up, you know, hundreds of percent over the past year or so, really start to retrace a good bit. So, um, we don't see a lot of that going on in the S&P. Uh, you see it to an extent, but you see it at like maybe 10, 20%. Whereas like in the NASDAQ and some of these speculative plays that we're seeing in the Russell, you're seeing on the order of like 60, 70% pullbacks, if not more in some extreme cases. So anyway, love it. I think it's a good opportunity for me uh, to, to take a little bit of money. I focus a lot on dividends, man, and I've like, Literally, like, I don't want to say I've done a 180, but I have over $250,000 in some of these non-dividend paying stocks right now. But yet, the portfolio is yielding about just under $20,000, right? So that's pretty cool. It's a pretty good balance, in my opinion. Um, you start to have some of these things really grow into the companies that they might be. Take, like, Alibaba, for example. I believe that that 100 share position will grow, uh, and I have a long call on it as well. I believe that 100 share position will grow into over a $100,000 position. Amazon, I believe, my 10 share position will also grow into an over $100,000 position. So that's really the kind of goal right now is to get multiple $100,000 positions uh, and prepared, right? And buy them for say 20, 30,000, which eventually grow into a $100,000 position. So I have no doubt in my mind that Amazon will be a $10 trillion company one day. Uh, of course, I'm talking five, 10 years down the road if not more. Uh, Alibaba will easily be a trillion dollar, two trillion, three trillion dollar company one day. Um, and you know, that's, that's really what I'm trying to look at is to balance the portfolio a little bit. So while I am taking an impact on getting some of these income funds paying me every month, which is nice. At one point I was getting over like 500 some dollars from Nusi. No more. Um, but, uh, yeah, taking this opportunity, because if these things do start swinging in the right way, uh, the right trajectory, man, it's it's going to explode the portfolio and it's really going to put me on a different level. And then if I really wanted to, right, then I think the portfolio could double, maybe even triple where its size is today uh, in the next coming years. And that's the case. Then I'm really on a different magnitude of playing in the markets, right? And that's kind of the goal. So it's like, I'm at where I'm at, you know, close to a million, 30 years old, pretty excited about that. But at the end of the day, it's about playing the game, playing the doubles game and uh, really just trying to get myself to, to the eight figure mark. You know what I mean? Like I'm done worrying about seven, right? Like this last $100,000 grind um, from like 870,000 to a million, has been awful. Like it's been like, it feels like trying to grow at 500,000, but I think that's just the impatience that I've gotten uh, with the current market uh, that we're seeing right now. So uh, and we've seen over the past year, right? You see everything double almost over the past year. Or so, uh, you know, you, you get a little impatient when things slow down a bit, but anyway, I hope this video finds you guys great. Hope it finds you guys well. One take Drake. Um, just hoping that, uh, you guys continue to get good information out of the content. Hopefully you guys can see my perspective and hopefully it helps you guys in your perspective as well. Thank you all for your support. I love you all so much. Reach out to me on Twitter, Facebook, anything. I'm here for you guys. I literally do this all for you. Um, share my journey with you guys and hopefully it's just helpful for any of you guys to understand. It's a grind. It's an eight year grind. It's almost a nine year grind at this point. Every month you got to put money in and that's all I can say. All right, I should actually get to do some work. Um, love you all. Thank you all so much for the support. Talk to you soon. Cheers.